During the Neolithic, ancient groups of people in many different locations were prolific builders. Whether we're talking about stone circles, dolmens, or more utilitarian structures, an enormous amount of effort went into construction activity. It seems unlikely that such mega projects were built without being well planned in advance, but what such a process would have looked like isn't known beyond a few small clues here and there. However, a new paper published in the journal PLOS One might just shed light on how at least one type of Neolithic structure was planned and designed. Over the years, thousands of Neolithic megatraps, referred to as desert kites, have been found all over the Near East. Researchers studying engravings in Jordan and Saudi Arabia now believe they've found blueprints to scale for these traps. If they are right, then these are the oldest architectural plans ever found. Although the researchers aren't sure if the engravings played a role in the construction of the kites or had another related purpose. Let's get into it. There are very few plans, maps, or models dating back to earlier than the Bronze Age that can show us how the ancients conceived and designed monumental structures, whether we're talking about those that were entirely man-made or those that were modified natural formations such as cave complexes. The majority of plans to come down to us today were produced in Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt. One older example that I'm personally aware of includes the miniature model of a temple found in Malta, which shows that these huge Neolithic structures once had roofs, even though not one of these roofs is still extant today. However, this is not thought to be to scale. The paper mentions the much older examples of Upper Paleolithic engravings, which it's thought were schematic maps, probably for preparing hunting strategies. Examples of these have been found at the Abbonce Cave in Spain, and at Pred Mosti in the Czech Republic. However, these are abstract representations of the landscape rather than maps to scale. Bronze and Iron Age maps from the Alps have been found which depict agricultural plots, field features, enclosures and domestic dwellings. But it's not certain if these were meant to show real or imagined landscapes. A much more famous example is the map engraved on a schist slab found at St. Belek in France. This is a much clearer representation of local topography and man-made structures, but it does date to the early Bronze Age. All in all, 6,255 desert kites have been found in the Near East, Cook Asia and Central Asia. There's a website that provides regular updates on this number, which I've listed in the description below. They date to around 9,000 years ago, falling into the time period known as the pre-pottery Neolithic B, and were used as mega traps for wild animals, due to their vast size varying between hundreds of meters and as much as five kilometers in length. They are difficult to perceive on the ground, but much easier to see from the air. They're referred to as kites because of their shape. Within them are pits with depths of around four meters. Originally identified from the air in the early 20th century, they were immediately thought to be ancient hunting traps, but this was only confirmed in recent years during archaeological investigations. The highest, den the highest density of these structures is in the lava fields called Harat al-Sham in southern Syria, eastern Jordan, and northern Saudi Arabia. Harat al-Sham comprises around 800 volcanic cones and 140 dikes, and was particularly eruptive during the Miocene. One engraving was found on the Jibal al Kashabiya plateau in Jordan. This limestone plateau escarpment is around 1,000 metres above sea level. In this area, archaeologists have found eight kites in total, all built out of limestone and church slabs. Another eight structures, which are referred to as campsites, were also found in the vicinity of the kites. The stone containing the engraving of a kite was found inside one of these campsites. There are numerous carved stones in the area which are similar to those referred to as cigar-shaped stones belonging to the pre-pottery Neolithic A, Murabitian culture. One of these measuring 80 centimetres in length and 32 centimetres in width contained the engraving of a kite in low relief. The monolith itself weighs 92 kilograms and was carved using a hard hammer, whereas the engraving was made using much finer incisions and pecking. Experts think the engraving was carved with a lithic tool. The engraving of the kite shows its driving lines culminating in a star-shaped enclosure surrounding cup marks which look as though they are meant to represent the pits. 
It appears to be incomplete, probably due to erosion or perhaps it was never finished. There's also a zigzag pattern within the engraving forming five chevrons. It's not clear what these are meant to depict. The authors of the paper think they either represented a net or some other non-permanent feature that likely constituted part of the hunting ground, or a topographic feature such as the fragmentation of the escarpment slope. The other engraving was found on the Jebel Asziliyat plateau in Saudi Arabia. There are two pairs of kites 3.5 kilometers apart on this largely sandstone plateau and they sit towards the edge of the cliff. Archaeologists mapping rock art in a drainage feature within the plateau found two huge engravings, each depicting a kite. The two engravings are on the flat surface of a sandstone boulder which had fallen into the wadi, Arabic for a dried riverbed, from the cliff edge above. This flat surface measures 3.82 by 2.35 metres. One engraving is well preserved, the other largely eroded. They are entirely carved using a pecking method. The engraving to the east of the boulder shows the driving lines of a kite leading to a star-shaped enclosure and features eight cup marks depicting pits. Although difficult to interpret due to erosion, the western engraving shows the driving lines, the enclosure and at least four cup marks. The researchers aren't sure if the engravings were made on the boulder before it fell, or once it was already in the wadi bet. Geographically, the boulder is equidistant from each of the two pairs of physical kites on the plateau. Detailed quantitative comparisons of the engravings with nearby physical kite structures concluded that the carvings were indeed depictions of those closest to them. Furthermore, they were to scale, which lends weight to the hypothesis that they were blueprints used for the accurate construction of the megatraps. The scale at both sites is approximately 1 to 175, and they map out the cardinal directions of the traps as well. These engravings show that the ancient communities who built the huge desert kites had a good grasp of spatial awareness and were able to make accurate measurements on a monumental scale. It also shows they communicated with one another across vast distances and evolved their hunting techniques over time. The authors of the paper conclude that these are to quote, the oldest known architectural plans to scale in human history. Other examples of maps from the Neolithic include the mural from Katalhoyuk in Turkey that dates back to 6600 BCE and is thought to show a village and the volcanic eruption of the nearby Mount Hassan Dagi. The oldest model of a large object is that of a reed bundle boat discovered in Kuwait and dating to 5000 BCE. Another interesting example dates back to around 4500 BCE, when the Kojadermen, Gumalnita Karanova culture in Southeast Europe, made models of burnt clay domestic dwellings. None of these are scale maps or models though and certainly aren't as old as the desert kites. Such accuracy isn't seen until the Bronze Age, such as the inscribed tablet from Jorgen Tepe in Mesopotamia, which shows a cadastral map. Cadastral means that it shows the ownership of a specific geographical area for tax purposes or the ancient equivalent. Since topographical details are largely absent from the engravings, the authors of the paper suggest that they may not have been used for the planned construction of the desert kites after all, but rather for the organisation of hunts amongst the community. Alternatively, if they were used purely for hunting strategies, then they would not need to be to scale. Perhaps they were meant to be symbolic instead, demonstrating knowledge and mastery of the surrounding area. It might also be that they had both practical and symbolic functions. Personally, I wonder how many more examples of these engravings there are. Such a vast and arid landscape is not easy to investigate, but I imagine more of these will be discovered in the coming years and may help to reveal their function. I don't think they were used for the design and planning of the structures because surely there would have been easier ways of doing that. To me, they seem more like guides for nomadic hunters arriving in the area on a seasonal basis and needing pointers as to where they can trap wild animals. A bit like plaques on modern day hiking trails. Perhaps also a solid way of passing down information from one generation of hunters to the next. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button. And thank you to my patrons, channel members and super chatters for all your support. I'll catch up with you next time.